Kite flying was once a popular childhood pastime, but in the modern times, it has become a hobby relegated to kite festivals and tournaments. But for those who love it, there's nothing like it. The process of making a kite, getting it in flight, and maneuvering it with the wind is a thrill that can't be experienced in a video game. Kite enthusiasts are teaching kids how to make kites, hoping more people will want to join in the fun. Today in our weekly special report, let's go fly a kite and revisit a charming part of Taiwan's collective memory. It's Sunday on Taiwan's north coast. A crowd has gathered at Lao Mei Beach in New Taipei's Shimen District. Look up at the sky, and it's an aerial show like no other. Kite enthusiasts from eight different countries have come to this international festival to set their treasured kites to the sky. Many of this year's foreign participants were invited by 86-year-old Robert Yen. You can get under that blue sky, those white clouds. You can take in fresh air, which is very good for your health. I fell in love with kiting several decades ago, and I haven't stopped flying them since. Making and flying kites was once a popular pastime for Taiwanese children. This was because kites cost little to make, and the materials could be easily found. With just one cent, you could buy two sheets of paper. You cut one into a square and then turn the other into a strip that will be the kite's tail. So with a single cent, you can buy two sheets of paper to make a kite. Po was a teacher in Yunming's Kohu district for 40 years. Many still call him Headmaster Ho. Since retiring, he's devoted himself fully to crafting artisanal kites. His Tenping workshop is packed with over 100 of them. I want to take Taiwan's unique kites and show them off in exhibitions. So when I make kite frames like the double cross, I use makino bamboo, Taiwanese makino bamboo. These kites I showcase aren't made with fiberglass rods. Thirty years ago, the government had heavily promoted kiting as a folk activity, and many schools organized routine kite competitions. Ho said that back in the day, he had gotten into kites only because he had hoped to win a prize and get a promotion. He didn't expect to fall in love with kites, too. Thirty years later, he's gone from being a complete beginner to a kite master. We're on a small country road near Ho's home, where he's getting ready to demonstrate his skills. One after another, 36 connected owl kites soar up to a height of 108 meters. This kite train is the result of a full month's hard work. Sometimes I feel old, but when these kites take off, I feel just like a child. At this year's kite festival in Xinzhu, there was a moment with no draft, and my dragon kite suddenly plunged. I got up and chased after it. Ah, that feeling when I was running. What speed? I felt so light on my feet. How? Ho pours time and energy into building kites, as well as to passing on his craft to the next generation. <laughs> kite materials in hand, Ho arrives at Dinghu Elementary School in Yuming's Kohu Township. Ho used to be the headmaster of this remote school. After retiring, he came back to teach the school's kite club. <laughs> The kids get instruction one on one. The steps of kite making are displayed on a poster. Ho provides all the supplies they need, bringing in odds and ends from his own home. The school's tiny racetrack is where teachers and students hone their kite flying skills. In groups of five or six, they put their DIY kites to the test. These days, you eat with your phone, you eat with your TV, you study with a computer. I think that getting distance from your devices can be healthy. 
Also, when children have to focus on the task at hand, they develop their ability to concentrate on a single thing at a time. Students at this remote school have plenty of space to play with their kites. Kids in the big city are not so lucky. Finding a safe and suitable place to fly kites can be quite challenging. 包含所有的台北市的和平公园，它全部都是管制的。All of Taipei's riverside parks are regulated. You can't fly kites there. Last year, after our persistent lobbying, New Taipei gave us a rare win and allowed kite flying in three places. Usually, kite lines are about 45 meters long, but New Taipei restricts them to about 30 meters or less. <laughs> Over the past 15 years, Zhen Kaiyuan has organized more than 30 kite events. He says his most important mission is to lobby for more kite flying space. We want adults to be able to look back on their childhood memories. We want children to have a place to make memories they can look back on. Taiwan's kite culture refuses to disappear. Kite lovers hope these flying works of art will continue to animate the lives of generations to come.